Welcome back everybody and before we tear into the VFO let's go after this power supply. Uh, you remember the power supply has got some tall uh, capacitors and the replacements uh, are these 150 at 500 volts. Now the problem with this, this is a voltage doubler and when you put these in one of these, both of them, will have a voltage potential on. I don't think that's got a covering on it at all. And so I think that is actually the ground side, which will be the center of the voltage doubler, which will have some high voltage on it. So um, <clears throat> are the chances of sticking your hand in there? It, it's pretty crowded, but there is always a potential. So... What I've decided to do is uh, the old heat kit capacitors that I pulled out of the uh, power supply. I removed the top disc, the plastic disc, and I'm going to glue them on top. And uh, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to see that part number and going to say, "Whoa, what's that? Uh, what's that?" So anyway, that's that's my plan. Is uh, I've got a couple of these that I can just glue on the top, and that'll pre prevent anybody that inadvertently touching it if they were to be in there for some unreason. Un you know, for some reason, I don't know why they would be, but it may be unsuspecting. Somebody gets in there and doesn't realize. Well, it's just the top of a cap, you know. So but there, the potential's there. Got a little messy with the glue here, but that's <laughs> that doesn't really matter as long as the tops are protected. Okay, the uh, kit comes with the bleeder resistors, which are 470k one watt resistors, and 0 0.01 microfarad capacitors at 1 kV. So it's easier to to go ahead and assemble this before we get started. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to twist like a, a twist or so or round the re resistor leads of the cap leads and what I will do is I will solder this and then clip this lead and then put this across each one of these capacitors and push it down as far as I possibly can so I'll have room for the wires which you see up here as you can see these Zoom in, you can see it's pretty much replacing what, what's in there. But it's easier to go ahead and do this ahead of time before you and have it on the capacitors when you stick it in. I want to leave as much of this lead possible to put uh, these wires on. Okay, maybe that's focused good. Uh, what I did is I sorted these, I clipped. Uh, the capacitor leads off and then I wrapped the resistor leads around it to kind of stand it up a little bit for heat dissipation and push the wires all the way down on the terminal because there's not much terminal here to solder to but it's still enough and then I, I solder this now I'll do the other one the same way and then we'll pull the old ones out and we'll mark, make sure we get the uh, polarity of these things right. Before we start tearing this out, let's uh, go over how this is laid out. Uh, the two high voltage capacitors, these are the originals. Um, if you're looking at the front of the radio from the bottom, this one and this one, they have a bl black dot on the terminal. These are the negative uh, terminals of the capacitor. So if you're looking from the front, they're both on the right. Okay. Uh, on this side, 
there's a red wire coming to the positive and this comes from the terminal off the rectifier board from the 800 volt uh, pin. It goes, of course here's your uh, bleeder resistor and your bypass capacitors. <clears throat> here's the jumper between the negative and the positive of this capacitor. This lead goes down, goes behind this uh, cable um, bunch of cables <laughs> wire and harness I guess is what I'm looking for and let's see you may see it and it goes in right there goes through the through the chassis and it goes and attaches to and there's so much glare here there we go I'll block it to this terminal here and that is the zero of the uh, secondary so this is the uh, terminal where it goes to the rectifier board it's rectified by D1 through 4 comes over here and then goes through the voltage doubler now the negative I didn't do that right <laughs> it comes over here and uh, the 800 volts here this is where the other terminal of the uh, transformer comes to the positive and the negative junction of these two capacitors uh, right here is the negative I got, can't, it's hard to stay on camera guys and look how small this is and that's okay that's okay uh, it's you know that's probably a, a size 18 maybe 20 wire um, but uh, I don't know if that's by design or what but you know could be a fuse who knows but for whatever reason maybe just what they what they used <laughs> so we're going to uh, you know there's one wire two wire three wire four wires uh, and we just have to uh, take these take these out and then you know four screws holds these in we'll put uh, the new ones back in the the, the uh, clamps and slide them in there making sure we orient the negatives both up Masters are uh, unsorted, so we got to go flip this over and take out those four screws and pull those clamps out and then reinsert these new ones. I got the capacitors out. I uh, had to <laughs> go buy a new screwdriver. This one in this corner by the uh, transformer is very hard to get to. You have to have a long screwdriver, preferably a, a, a slimmer one than I used, but um, anyway. Um, just showing you here, it says the black is negative. So that's, we know this is the negative. Same with that one, the black is negative. Now the negative one, all this is pretty much lined up with this with this clamp okay so that's how we're going to put the new ones in line that up that's the negative one let's do the other one okay capacitors are in place uh, the negative one is up, up the negative one is up so now we've got to uh, uh, reinstall the wires jumper from here to here this one to here the black one to here and then this high voltage one or the one from the 800 to here and we should be good all right those are put back in place now we can move on to the VFO all right 
let's uh, check the common one here to ground 440 volts and let's go to the one uh, high voltage one and we're 879 volts so that sounds about right okay let's uh, let's take a look at this uh, VFO so you can look down in here you can see some of the uh, grease and corrosion there. I don't think that's an electrical problem there. Let's see. Maybe I can get it to focus. And uh, it's just hard grease. We can, what we'll do is we'll uh, I mean the mechanism seems to work okay but uh, it's just um, it's cleaning and lubricating I think the problem is going to be back in here and like I've said before uh, if you'll go and watch I'll try to provide a link to it uh, it's called the radio shop uh, uh, guys buddy uh, very very detailed very knowledgeable um, does a great job does two of these uh, he shows one in detail the other one he just you know kind of I'm done with it <laughs> but uh, and then when he tore into the other VFO he uh, he put some detail to it because uh, it uh, you know it's it was important so anyway there's uh two screws one on the top one on the bottom now I guess this is the top isn't it let me peel this back a little bit I hit it there we go it's a little bit better try to make sure I keep you in the field of view If you've never videotaped your work, you should try it sometime just for grins and giggles because you'll find that you're off camera and everything. Now this nut back here, it's not a quarter, it's, it's not a five sixteenths, somewhere in between. I've already loosened this. I believe it's a metric. I've loosened it. We'll see if we can get it on. Okay, maybe I won't. There was very little corrosion. I thought it was corrosion. It was just that grease. And um, I think um, I think I got it all out. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I cheated. <laughs> I used some pliers. <laughs> All right, there's a little star washer and a nut. Uh, each one of those screws had a star washer also. All right, now this should just come off. Now, like I said, I've been in this before years ago. Very tight fit. Yeah, one more important piece. Um, there are three washers on this stud that comes through this the can that that nut went on and the reason being is it keeps from crushing the case of the VFO so that's basically a spacer is what that is so don't lose those make sure you know, you put them in a safe place and put them back on before you put it back together. 
so let's see if we can see some issues in here let's close this these plates so we don't mess with them all right let's see let's see if I can get a little light on the subject maybe it won't go crazy on the focus get my strap out of the way let's see there's the ball bearings um, if you go over there and watch the radio shop and buddy's video it l probably looks like I've stolen the video with the grease I mean this is hard goofy grease hardened same situation as uh, what buddy had uh, shown so we'll end up cleaning that out and what he uh, told me he cleaned it out with was WD-40 and um, acetone which is fingernail polish remover um, I may use uh, lacquer thinner now on the other one that he had was down in here and as you can see right here and I really wish I could get you a good picture right there and we'll see what we had if you can see this it is green grease so that is a combination of corrosion, oxidation, and it's hard. So these are our problems with the uh, VFO. So what we're probably going to do is exactly what he did, and that's um, we'll uh, we'll take this plug out bend these little plugs in pull it all the way out so that we can get to this this clip which grounds back here that you can see I, I, I think you can see it flaking off and it's green so it is uh, you know that's that's our problem one of our problems and uh, then this black wire is grounded here but it's also soldered into the hole that that clip is also soldered into so we're going to desolder that get it out clean all this mess up clean all this up re-lubricate this lubricate this up here and uh, he suggests that we uh, pull this board and look at uh, uh, the sorter traces in there so the and and check those out and everything now back in the day I'm trying to think which one I want to say it was this one it was an FET and I had a problem with this it would quit working and I pulled it out and I would heat it I would freeze it could not make it quit I'd put it back together it'd be going down the road and <laughs> it would just quit again so I finally ended up bolting this VFO up on top of the chassis with it open and I dared it to quit I run it 24 7 and in a few days it quit and I found I didn't know what it was and I found it was this, I believe it was this FET, went, uh, went, went south. And it wasn't heat or cold sensitive. It just was random. So I changed it and never had any more trouble. But that's, uh, that's our game plan. Uh, a little bit of cleaning and uh, then put this back together. And then we'll try the radio. Okay, trying to get you a, a close-up of this grease. 
as you can see look how gooey sticky that is now let's swap this around here you can see that's grease and corrosion in there footage there hopefully you can see that and that's uh, that's our challenge okay I've cleaned this out I haven't lubed it yet but uh, as you can see it's a whole lot better all right, let's go to the other end. Okay, maybe I won't. There was very little corrosion. I thought it was corrosion. It was just that grease. And um, I think um, I think I got it all out. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so I've cleaned everything. I'm going to take this apart now. Things are going to fly every which way. <laughs> uh, but there is a uh, a knurled nut which I have and it comes off. you can see it or not let me get some close-up on this okay <laughs> it looks like play-doh in there that grease and um, of course you see that it won't turn unless it has that uh, nut on there and if you look down in there see some more grease there we go so pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble this and wash it all out and lubricate that I'm not going to put grease back on this gear on these gears that I'm going to use some triflow lubricant it's non clotting not the right word not, it, it won't gum up non gumming I guess what we're looking for and uh, it's got Teflon in it so that should be adequate so let me take this apart four screws I had the screw that held the dial on. I just moved it over to the side. Four screws, and this mechanism slides off. It's just a plate, and so that uh, gives us access to this. We've got to be careful because inside here are the other bearings. You can, I think you can see it in there now. So we'll take this out. We'll make sure we clean that out. Uh, not sure if that's another bearing race or is it made into that. I think it's made into that, but this is the grease. Just have to clean it out. And, uh, and there's the other ball bearing. Never catch it on camera, do we? <laughs> anyway, 
I'm just going to put this in some uh, alcohol and clean all this up and then start putting it back together. The ball bearing on the right is one of the three that goes around the shaft. The one on the left is one of the ones that goes in the center. So as you can see, it is a smaller ball bearing. So don't get them mixed up. I soaked uh, the parts, got the ball bearings out, uh, soaked the shaft in alcohol. I took a uh, hummingbird feeder brush and rotted this out and cleaned the holes and everything like that. Well, I got to looking for the spring. I got to looking for the spring. I said, oh no, I've lost this one-of-a-kind spring. And then, I found it on the hummingbird feeder <laughs> cleaner. <laughs> ah. Not plaque, that, that scared me. That knocked plaque loose and ain't moved in 20 years. But anyway, that uh, is uh, all clean. We're going to start putting it back together now. And uh, so we begin now by... Let me get everything ready. Let's see if we can put this back together. I've slipped that back in there. And it fell right back out. So I'm going to take and go ahead and put the spring down in there. And I'll use this as a ramrod and put it down in there. Let it come back out, see? Alright, now we will fit this back on here and got to make sure this meshes and then we put these screws back in here The reason it wasn't aligning, uh, this gear had dropped down just a little bit, so it had to uh, go in that hole, and then it these are flush. Let me put the screws back in. Okay, got the screws on. Also put the uh, screw that holds the dial on. Um, gonna go ahead and drop uh, this bearing down in here, and hopefully it won't fall out. What I'm going to do, keep an eye on it, make sure. I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to use a lot of grease, okay? This is sewing machine grease. Some people use white lithium. That's. I'm going to use this mainly on the bearings themselves. And this one is just to hold that one in place. I almost got it all the way back together and realized that I had run out of memory on my camera. <laughs> so, we've put this plate back on. We have dropped the spring back down in there and a ball bearing. There's another ball bearing on the end of this shaft and I've, I've used Singer sewing machine grease. I put just enough to hold the three ball bearings in. And I'm going to put that back down in there and try to keep from mashing, knocking the ball bearings out, okay? Now remember this is, uh, it's got a race and a flat side so the, the bearing race goes towards the bearings and then the nut goes on here. 
and I just lost a bearing. So hopefully I will push that little race up there. Push the race up there. And I pushed the small bearing out. So let me see if I can push that back down in there without losing the other two. And put this bearing in. Thusly. All I need to do is drop this on the floor, right? And your hands are always in the way. Always in the way. Put a little bit more grease to kind of glue. It doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I just keep losing bearings, don't I? We will get them all in here eventually. I'd had it together a while ago. <laughs> Now we want to put this race on there. If we get that race on there with those bearings up there, we'll be okay. Apologize about the. Now this will go on. The nut will go on. Now you see there's a gap right here, and this still this is loose. The way it will stay in. Okay. In order to tighten this, we've got to mash this in and then start tightening this. Hand tighten it. Now this should not come back out when I release it. And then we should be able to work. Now I've got oil grease in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to loosen this nut a little bit and I'll do it off camera and I'm going to fill this up in here with this tri-flow lubricant that has Teflon in it. Then I will lubricate these gears with this. Okay lubricated this with that tri-flow lubricant with Teflon. It uh, read several articles that recommend that for VFOs uh, because it doesn't uh, gum up. And uh, so I'm going to try it. Apparently other people have had success with it. So I lubed that and I lubed the spring on the end with that. Um, this nut, uh, if you crank it down too tight, then it, then it makes this, this mechanism is really, really tight. But I've uh, loosened it off just a little bit and it's really, really smooth right now. Uh, these are lubed with the same uh, tri-flow lubricant with Teflon. So we're going to put this back together and call this good. going to start putting the VFO back together. This is the um, torque bearing, I guess you'd call it, on the front of the radio. Uh, if you look, I'm rolling it around. It um, looks pretty good. Um, moves around. I'm going to put some more of that uh, tri-flow 
oil lubricant in there and uh, before I mount it just kind of let it sit there and roll it around make sure it gets a good coating of it and then we'll put this back together the one thing you've got to remember is to put those three washers back on here to keep the case from caving in when you when you tighten the nut up on the back this typically had uh, some Loctite on it and if you don't have any Loctite I just put a little clear fingernail polish on it just to keep it from backing out a little we got the VFO put back in the fixed board the AVR the automatic voltage regulator board mounted back that's this board uh, I have replaced the lamps which were incandescent and now they're LED and I used the cool blue so I've got it's hooked up and let's see just got uh, a little speaker uh, yeah, I don't know if you see it or not not that big a deal I've got the matching speaker for this but it just takes up so much room I'm just using this speaker so let's uh, turn it on uh, and uh, check it out now on camera that's kind of bright and washed out but it's really it's really a cool blue and uh, I really like it. So let's see if what. Before the word leaks out about all the Americans that want to read, I've got a just a wire, about a 20 foot piece of wire strung around here. It's about 9:30 at night, so the 80 meter band is in pretty good shape. The uh, Hurricane Ida, the front part of it, just came through uh, here about a couple of hours ago. We got a little bit of rain. We haven't got a whole lot yet, so I expect the rain tomorrow. I checked the uh, the VFO voltage. It was really close. I checked the frequency uh, on the VFO uh, from zero to 600. Really close. Now I can touch it up, and I probably will, but I'm going to wait until uh, I get the recap kit, and then we'll do some more recap. But I think this is going to end this one. Um, we've got the receive, everything looks pretty good um, <clears throat> I think in part four we will go and try the transmit I'll take it down to the other and put it on the antenna or I may just put it up to the dummy load here that may be what I do is just a dummy load but um, <clears throat> then uh, by that time the capacitor kits will be in and then we'll start looking at which ones we need to and I'll go through and, and check the voltages and uh, make sure everything's in line and anything it's not doesn't look good we'll uh, you know we'll address that with uh, uh, with changing out the capacitors so from Larry from the hills of Tennessee thanks for watching